This is a 40% keyboard, and I feel like it needs a little bit of an explanation. People seem to think that it's just kind of a, a gimmick, and to be honest, that was one of them. When I first started getting into this, I saw these little things and went, that's great, but where are all the keys? And, you know, yeah, it looks cool when you put just that in front of your monitor, but how often are you trying to find these keys? It, it just seemed like a cool thing that people did to be cool. And I didn't really understand at that point. Now I do. And I hope to explain it to you too. But to explain it, I have to start with a little bit of history. <laughs> this keyboard just scrolls into view like the like the Star Destroyer on uh, Star Wars. <laughs> it's huge, man. <laughs> uh, so I am a programmer, and I use Vim, and uh, that's something some of you might already know. But part of using Vim, a big part, is using HJKL for arrow keys. There are other programs that do it, but it's popping up in more and more places and there's a reason why. When I started out, I was still using the arrow keys to move my cursor around. And to do that meant that I picked up my hand and moved it to the arrow keys. And this motion might not seem like a big deal, and it doesn't seem like it right now. I can do this in less than a second, and I can do it pretty quick and probably without even looking. That's why this space is here. It makes it easier for your fingers to feel, okay, here's where I am. Now I'm at the arrow keys, but you do it automatically. That's why that space is there. You'll find that on other keyboards too, like ThinkPads are very good at this kind of... Never mind. Anyways, I wanted to stop using the arrow keys because I wasn't a true Vimmer until I used the arrow key, or use HJKL. So I bound them to block so that they wouldn't work. And then in Vim, I had to use this. And I liked it. I liked it a lot. It was a lot faster. And all I had to do was hit escape to switch modes, and then arrow keys, and I was good to go. But I couldn't stop there. I liked that I didn't have to move my fingers, and I started to realize, well, I don't even like hitting escape. By the way, Vimmers out there, this, this quick motion, and usually a pound on escape, very bad on your wrists. Uh, and I found that you can set up a mapping so that JK in rapid succession is the same as escape. I saw other people doing caps lock to escape, but that was a little bit more custom. This was quick and easy. And I liked not having to move my hands. It Again, it seemed like a little thing, but in practice, in actual work, it was a big deal. So I started wondering how many more keys I could move down. These function keys, well, how could I access those using leader keys to get where I needed to get easily. And I started to recognize that the less I moved my hands, the faster I was. So now we return to this guy, the 40%. It's designed so that your fingers go right here, just like on any other keyboard but it's designed that all the other keys are one space away from where your keys or where your fingers already are. So all of these key presses, very fast, very quick, and very sure. You'll notice I'm not moving my hands to do these things. I'm just kind of angling my wrists around. And that means that I have the same mount point. My wrist touch the same, touches the same point always so that my hand knows spatially where I, it needs to go to hit the keys. If I were to do something like this, the hover typing, people do that and they, they get pretty good at it. You still have to index either at the elbows or forearms. You index somewhere so that you know, your hands know, just like here where you seek this white space, your hands know where they need to go. So now we've got all of these keys right next to us, which makes them fast and makes them accurate. So how do we get to 
Well, let's start with the arrow keys. I just did it. I'm at the arrow keys. This button right here, this is my function layer. And this turns HJKL into my arrow keys. Not in Vim, in everything. If I'm in a website and I need to move my text around, I just got to the arrow keys. Now I'm moving back and forth and editing my text. When I'm done, I need to hit enter. There's enter. Or even better, this is enter. Or this is backspace when I press it and release it. And here's my regular space bar. But numbers, there's no numbers. Everyone talks about the numbers. You can't, there's no numbers, guys. How do you number? Just relax. We're moving the keys to our fingers. We're not moving our fingers to the keys. When I press this button with this part of my pinky, I'm really just kind of tilting my hand slightly. But when I do that, this is a number pad. I just moved my hand to the number pad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, decimal, plus, minus, enter. It's all there. Everything is here. Function keys. That's I have to move my hand over two or the hair. And then function keys. And then numbers all the way across the top. And special character keys. Uh, bang, at, hash, and on. It's all there. And it's all right under my fingertips. And it's one finger move away. So, think about this as not moving your hands. The less you move your hands, the faster you're going to type. The more work you're going to get done. I'm not even talking about programmability and macros and making it so that when I press one thing, it does a bunch of things. I'm just talking about regular keys. Just by pressing a button, I can move the keys around. So by doing this, I have new keys. When I hit escape now, I just do this. And when I want to hold it, it's now control. There's so many options in these programmable keyboards that save you time and yeah, I guess save you space and also look cool doing it. I mean, it's a tiny keyboard. It's kind of weird. It's interesting. People like it. And the fact that it's not just for looks, the fact that this was designed so that you don't have to move your hands, so that everything becomes faster, and it work and it looks good while doing it. That's just a bonus. So I just wanted to help people to understand that we're not. The goal of this is to move keys to your hands, not your hands to keys, and everything, everything will be faster for it. I've talked mostly about being a programmer or doing heavy computer computing work, but for the regular user, for just anyone who just does a little bit of browsing, maybe a little bit of emailing, it's all right here. Spacebar, backspace, enter, you can put the backspace up here if you want, it's, it's all there, and then your numbers come right back. Number pad, it's all there. So uh, I hope this clears up some of the misconceptions. I don't want people to think that this is just like a, a cool person keyboard and, you know, it, I don't know, people act like it. Uh, someone just brought their keyboard too close to a paper cutter and they're like, oh no, what do we do now? Well, I guess we could do this weird layering thing where you press a button and then there's other buttons underneath these buttons. It's It's by design, guys. It's by design. The design follows the form. Not the other way around. So, consider a 40%. They're relatively inexpensive. And you might be surprised how much better, faster, how much, I don't know, how much you get done with one. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, yeah, I know. There's no numbers printed on these keys, uh, but you can buy custom caps that have the, the numbers printed on them so that you can see them. 
it's all available, and frankly, the human brain is amazing and has the capacity to learn stuff. So with a little bit of practice and a cheat sheet up here somewhere, you will learn how to do this, and you will be faster. You will. So I, I hope this was helpful. Thanks.